very good afternoon to you from Adisawe, Kanda. You're tuned in to TV3. This is Hot Issues and I am Nuong Falong. On our seat today, we have a senior citizen who prides himself as a security expert. He has been twice a chief of defense staff. And if you've already guessed it, yes, we have Brigadier Joseph Nunu Mensa. Brigadier, you retired as a one-star general. Yes. Years ago. Yes. You were the chief of defense staff. Yes. Have you seen any improvement in the welfare of women and men in uniform in this country? Let me go back and make a few comments about being retired and being a one-star general. Okay. Today there are three stars. Mm. I was one star. And I served two terms. Why two terms? And he retired as a one-star general. Mm -hmm. And that goes to explain my background. That in the army you take orders. Sometimes when the order doesn't make sense to you, you question it. So. And and it's not normal to question the order. It's not orders and order. But I'm somebody who will not take something which I know to be wrong. I will question it. And the army, you don't make too much noise. You don't question, you obey orders. So and when you, you, question, you didn't really conform? I didn't conform. And, and, and it become a burden to many people. That's a good run, uh, Brigadier. Yes. During your time, were there any two and three star generals? Before me, there was. Because General Akufu, I don't know that you may not know, because these are the people who were executed in 1979 in the June 4th uprising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. General Kufu was a three-star general, the French General Kufu. And then there were many generals here over, all over the place, General Odati Wellington, Kote, Utuka. There were two-star generals. But you see, we are all not the same. We are unique. No two people, not even identical twins are the same. So how did you become chief of defense staff, considering that you had seniors ahead of you? Well, no, no. They, these people were were murdered, were actually executed. So was it because they were executed? You no, no, there was became? no other senior officer okay. ahead of us. So after they were executed, the, the, the way was... Well, it was not, because, well, not because, because of me that they were executed. I mean, there was a massive revolution. I'm sure you read about it. Mm, 40 years ago, 1979. June 4th, revolution, it was really what I would call a mutiny. Mm. Rising against authority, established authority. A very frightening thing. We are talking about coup, coup these days, but this wasn't a coup. It was more frightening than a coup. And almost all the senior officers were put together and executed. You know, as one thing died at Nima Police Station, not far from here. So there was an absence of a senior officer. And yes, so you became I was the most senior officer. One of the most senior. There were three or four brigadiers. Today, there are more than 100 and, and over, you know. But so one of them had to be appointed. And I was appointed among the few that were around at the time. But I should have been promoted to major general and lieutenant general. But you see, when you are that, uh, that noisy, that, that non-conformant, you suffer the consequences. So you were once a national security advisor. I was. When you look at the time you served, yes. what would you say is your greatest feat? 19, sorry, 2009. Mm -hmm. President Mill became uh, a president. And I had assisted him and on a very small scale. But he called me and said, you know, I bomb about the pay here. And I told him, look, Mr. President, may, may I say you all my life. So the best I can do is where I've been better, I've been properly trained in the area of security. It's okay, but I'm a security advisor. Now, what have you achieved? Advising, going and arresting people for staging the coups and so on, as is the like, norm today, is not, it's not the main job. Your main job is to stop people from complaining. From so so Mills appreciated you? Of course he did. But, but when Mahama came, he changed you. They changed me because. What, what do you think about that? You see, when you are very tough, you see, people, people don't like handling tough people. Trump, you are changing everybody in the security you, who are tough. And, and I'm not going to soften for you. So you were too tough for Mahama? I'm too hot to handle. Uh. Too hot to, to handle. There's a the problem. I see, and I live by the truth. And I would never lie, even if I were gone to my truth. I will never lie. So let's, let's be very clear over yeah. there. You were saying you were changed by Mahama because you were too tough for him to handle? Or too I, hot for I him to handle? I didn't see the need for the changes that took place when President Mills 
you know, passed, passed on. There was no need. It's like taking over black stars. And then merely changing as and why everybody. Were you happy about the changes? Of course I wasn't happy. Not for my own sake. I thought it had Ghana. It had the NDC and it had Ghana as well. But you got a, a bunch of good people. Is this a feeling you still hold against oh. John Mahama? No, no, I'm not I'm not I'm not against him per se. But Ghana is suffering today. But our leader don't take advice. Mm. I would, not only him, all our leaders, even the great Nkrumah, you find it everywhere. I mean, Trump is doing the same thing. Cameron is doing the same thing. Boris Johnson is the same thing in Britain. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with our leaders. When we get power, the power corrupts. The absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm. You think that so I'm, I'm almost got next to God. In, still in connection yes. with, with John Mahama. Yeah, Mahama. I'm coming there. Because he ch it's because he changed you. We're having this conversation. No, no, no. no. I want to be very open here. I, mean, I don't fear, at 82, what do you fear anymore? Mm -hmm. I mean, all my friends are gone. I, be, I keep on burying them. So there are very few left. If I go tomorrow, it's my time to go. But let's live and speak the truth. Speak what we believe in. Mm -hmm. And what I believe in may not be hurting to me alone, but it's when I'm with you, it's just hurting Ghana. Today, look Would at you Ghana. say he doesn't listen to us? No, look us. at Ghana today. Look at, look at this. Look at the confusion in Ghana. What are they? The Takwadi girls or the by election? I was in West Wugon and all the confusion. It's because you've got people who don't know what they're about, who don't understand their work. And we have put them there for political expediency. And they're messing up. And Ghana is suffering for that reason. And it's all a combination of all these factors that are creating all the havoc we're having today. But if you were that competent and that good, why would Mahama change you? You see, it's not always the people who are competent are the best people that politicians want. So Mama didn't want they a competent want people person. that will sing their praises, that will to the that will lie down for them. But I'm too tough, I'm too stubborn, I'm too principled. And for that reason, I've suffered a lot. And I started suffering long ago, but it doesn't hurt me. See, life is a, all the life, all the world is a stage. And all the men and women. So you think players. you think Mama changed you because you were too principled? No, 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 not only tough. not only me. Don't make that mistake. It's for the general General uh, okay. chair of the house. All the all the staff that President Mama left behind. The people like Mr. Boho, mm. the Kumenso was who was his uh, President President uh, Mills uh, secretary. Um, all these key people, very experienced people. You know, all very Mr. 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 Um, uh, the chief of staff at the time. These were people who have acquired years of experience. You can't get me for what I have done and say I know nothing. I, I don't talk, like talking about myself, but later on, not the only son here, but go to, I was the first to go to, uh, go to Canada to train in 1968. Spent a year in India, mm. a part time in, in Russia now, and we were the time of uh, Nikita Khrushchev. And you don't see this man is stupid, he's idiot. He is not. Mr. Boho was a top civil servant. Many, many of them. And all this, you clear the, the house. Now, what you are doing, you are hurt, you are cutting your nose to spite your face. You see, but. I'm not surprised. Did Mahama cut his, his nails to spite well, his face? What happened to, to him in, in 2016 election? You think he lost because of some of these changes? In the army, when you go to war, and the general loses the war, he takes the blame. You see, let us learn to behave like the white people. We are trying to become like the white people. How do they behave? They are principled. They are principled. I was in Britain in 1962. Is Mahama principled? Our, our leaders are not principled, a few of them, not... Namely? Uh, let me go to President, President Mills, whom I say and I love. You know, he's somebody, he needed nothing in the world. He used to call me like you and I sitting down. And we talk. He said, President, I said, you know, I will him. We experience. The man's even on day. He seeks your opinion about so many things, not only about military matters, but you know that being that experience, You've, you've seen and done so many things. You want to tap that knowledge. That's, that's the most important. And all the team that he surrounded himself with, whether it's Secretary, Mr. Babeko Mensah, or the, uh, Mr. Newman, these were very, very experienced people. So the knowledge you get, so you are a powerful, a good president, not because of you yourself, but the team. Uh, <laughs> as, as a former National Security yes. Advisor, look at the state of security in the country yes. right now. Yes. Do you like the state of you know, the I, I don't know, I weep. So I just sit down and I say, how can Ghana become like this? How what, has Ghana what become? Why? Why and how? You talk about Takwa the girl, talking about the Iowa West Wogan election. We're talking about a so-called attempted coup. 
These are all funny things. Let's, let's stay on that, the Takwadi girls. Yes. When you look at the, the kidnappings of the Takwadi girls and also the series of murders we have yes. had yes. of policemen, is yes. that a normal security situation? No, no, it's, it's, a non, it's a real abnormal. And I'm not explaining to you why we are where we are. You see, when you don't have competent people, when you keep on changing them, you come to power and you clear the table, you don't remember, maybe it's, it's too noisy, I mean, it makes too much noise. Clear him, bring a new man there. You bring an incompetent person because it's, because it's a party person, you know, and you don't have expertise, you don't have knowledge mm. behind you. Mm. Well, this is what happens. Whenever these girls, I'm not saying that this appearance, uh, this appearance of these girls is something extraordinary. The, the, the Chibo girls in Nigeria, up to now, many of them, five years now, they haven't found them. Mm. It's a very difficult problem. But do you think we handle the case professionally? No, this is what I'm saying. That the people that handle the case, see, they lack expertise, they lack knowledge. And it's because we have been clearing the table every time. You think the time. CID lacks expertise no, and knowledge? What I mean, look, when, when, in, in Kumar's time, you see people there. I mean, I come to meet people. You can see that the gray hair that I have. I mean, I used to fear them. Oh, gray hair everywhere. That gray, where, gray hair was not acquired just like that, it, based on experience. So the institutional memory, you know what happened. Then they learn. You know, so I'm saying here that the way the case was handled was very bad. Professionally. Professionally. I'm not saying that the guy being kidnapped is the fault of the government. But subsequently, how you handle the case, how you show expertise, how even everybody gets up and saying something which is not authentic. They will just open their mouth and say something. Before you open your mouth and say something, you must know what you are saying. And not everybody can open their mouth and say anything. There is there a specific person you're referring to? I'm talking about, for example, the, um, the Takwadi girl, the CID boss. I don't know her. And I don't have any, any, any political affiliation. One, in these matters, you know, I'm, 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 I'm for Ghana. I love the country so much for that. I'm not a, I'm not a party political. you have any professional advice for her? No, what I'm saying is that I, I resigned in 1982. I mean, my, among my record, I resigned in 1982 after the murder of the... I don't know whether you were around 82 or you were around. <laughs> 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 the three judges were abducted and murdered brutally. An army officer. Mm. I was a member of the government at the time, the PNDC. And I said, how can we belong to a government among whom comes murderers? Tomorrow, how, do, how, do, how does your grandchild explain that his father was also among murderers? But talking about, about what, what should happen to the, the GID board, and, and, and I resigned. I what didn't should resign. happen? What do you think should happen to well, him? What I, I'm telling you, what I, did, what I did is what he should do. I didn't resign because I had a hand in the killing of the, of the, of the, um, the judges. So she didn't have a hand. But you take responsibility for what goes wrong under your watch. That is why I'm saying to you that when generals lose a war in a battle, they, they, they are removed. When you lose a, a campaign, uh, you are president, and you lose a campaign, you don't come back and say, I'm coming back. Your time is finished. You know? So I'm telling the commission of police that it's about time she jump. If she didn't jump, she will push to go. <laughs> We're still <laughs> talking to Brigadier <laughs> Joseph Nunu Mensa, and he's telling us to take responsibility when you make a mistake. You take responsibility for it and you resign. You're still watching Hot Issues on TV3. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Hot Issues on TV3. My name is Nuang Falong. We still have in the studio Brigadier Joseph Nunu Mensah. Yeah. There was a lot of conversation around um, and, and the Ministry of Information released a communique about an attempted overthrow of yeah, the government. Yeah. Did you hear about this? I heard. And I, I think it was the most unfortunate statement to make. Most you, you, unfortunate. you think the communication ministry erred in making that statement? First of all, we mess up with everything that's happening in Ghana. I'm going to we, the politicians. If this coup attempt was being handled by the security elements, the BNI, the, the um, military intelligence and whatnot, you leave it to them. But how, how did the politician come in to announce? Was he part of the team which was uh, investigating the, 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 the um, attempted coup? Well, the team makes the disclosure to them. Yeah. But then after, after you've actually come up to tell Ghanaians that attempt was made to betray the government, you charge them, and there's no, I didn't see within the charge anything to do with high treason, which is, which is what which is the coup is. The, the main charge. Yes, if you are going to betray a government, it's high treason. But high we understand that charges could change. But the point I'm making is that. When I look at the characters who, who were paraded to stage in the coup, these are not coup makers. These are what does a coup maker look like? A coup maker looks like when you, if you, if you go back to see when you see the FBI, 
SB Atta, the 17th attempt attempted coup. When you see this brave young man with a force behind him, he had a small force of armored Yokosuka regiment behind him. He had teeth arm. He had, he had, he had, he had like saying that uh, you want to make me palm soup, but there's no palm. How do you make a soup? You don't have anything. You, but you produce some, some reference, produce some attempt, some uh, locally made rifles, whatever. They're yeah. going to make a coup. You are, are you going to seize uh, TV3, seize uh, Radio Ghana, seize Radio Gold? Now they also know more. Or seize them. Uh, what are you going to do? This were jokers. He said, you don't come and tell Ghanaians a serious matter like this, announce as if something terrible is going to happen. And then, if, if it's going to happen, at this stage, you should have all the evidence. I've been out of Little Integrity before, in, 19, in the 70s. You don't go and announce that the coup d'etat is in the making when you haven't got all the facts. So you think the information ministry aired? They, 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 they heard it too much. He himself hasn't seen a coup before. I don't think, if you are 50 years old, you haven't seen a coup before. The last coup was 40 years ago. At least if you are 10 years old, you'll be 50 today. And, and he's not 50, I know he's not 50 yet. So, but you don't go and announce things and, and frighten people, you know, uh, disturb our peace. You know, tell the world Ghana is not safe because it, we are still in the way of, in the realm of making coups. Mm. These are things that you, you joke with. Before you say this, it, you, Is a coup impossible today? What do you want to say a coup? What is a coup? What is a coup? When people say coup, coup, what is a coup? Coup, coup is a violent overthrow of, a of the government, of the state. It's a high treason. And civilians can never, by themselves, organize a coup. They have to entice some military men to join them. And that this will, 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 will expose you to be arrested. So you, you, you're saying we need heavy military involvement to be able to succeed? If you are going to use guns, who are going to use the machine guns and the mortars and whatnot? Military. So those people that they showed on TV are planning to overthrow the government. There was no way they could overthrow a government. They could play, play, play the fool. But the statement said some officers were involved. Have they been produced? Well, they, we haven't seen their faces. But why haven't they charged them if they were involved and also put them before court like we did with the civilians? You see, we must behave in a way that will look credible. We are a serious country in a serious world. You can't be saying anything and think you can get away with it. I had handled coup makers before. You know, and, and, and in the process of collecting intelligence, you collect so much information. Now, when I say that, mommy, you are plotting a coup, there's no way you can deny it because the evidence is clear before you. You see. But you cannot follow people for one and a half years. So I hear, and then you say, we have the evidence. Then put the evidence in court, then you are hedging the evidence. I mean, it's not right. So you when you say military intelligence, <coughs> what role exactly would the military intelligence have played in foiling a coup? Military intelligence, I mean, I was head of military intelligence. You, you are. And like the CIA, like the KGB, you have networks within the military. So whatever the military make moves, if you are working well, you will hear it. And they are the key people factor in staging a coup, the military. I know many people in the time came to persuade military officers, I'll mention their names here, to stage a coup. They came to me, some bought loads of CDs in cocoa sacks. You don't need CDs to go and buy, stage a coup. And they brought the money to my office as head of military intelligence. So I knew how a coup, they can never do it by themselves. Because how, how, this, how could they have gone to stage a coup? Seize what? Airport, President Kovada's house, do what? Seize the TV3, GBC. How? How does the coup look like? Do you think that you can make Ghana a better place? The army thought that 66, having a move in Kroma, they can put a better decision into place and get so, it so coups are staged because the, um, so the people who say the coup believe they that, believe that the government is being run badly they can do so it so they better. want to make a change they're going to make a change but they have shown that they have, they have become the worst things have happened why can't you join why can't you fight a political party go to a normal process and also challenge them win election and change ghana brigadier yes retired yes having established that coups are secondary to an ailing economy yes what do you make of the economy of Ghana today? The economy of Ghana since 1966 has taken a dive. Before independence, I was in school. We did my school in 1951 onwards. When Nkrumah arrived, and I saw Nkrumah the first time in 51. He came to win about March or thereabout. And the, the feeling was one of big change. The feeling was one of a new country. 
we were the young ones were, were, were really, and, and our mothers, everybody was, was mad with the change that was coming. Then the change came, 57th, 6th of March, and we saw Ghana moving like a big ship across Ombo Dam, Takwa the Harbour. So the change there. was positive? Was positive. I mean, this road from Accra to Winneba wasn't there. All this began, began, began to, ha to happen. You know, and then, so they saw the change. The fact is here, I was once chairman of Georg, the Steelworks, but pharmaceuticals, now to every drug is, is, is imported. Why well, we have the factory there, which will be making the drugs, we now import everything. And we talk about the economy being bad. When we're importing we, everything... We do have some pharmaceutical companies in Ghana. Yeah, but Georg was drugs. a big one. And so Kuma wanted to start up the, 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 the infrastructure, the base. The, when I build a big house, like Ghana was going to build, you, you look at the education. There were only a few secondary schools. And Kuma created about more than 12, 50, 50 secondary schools. There was, Winneba was a port. I had to go and carry cocoa and cement to make money to pay my school fees. Tama Harbour came. So you could see, of course, Winneba was in the making. Straight fair. Now I'm going to say, it's like, it's, like, it's like hell. So you could see Ghana rising. You could, you could feel it. You can see, you can feel it. Then came the coup. There was a time the coup in Nkuma 1958. But, you know, then a time we made on Nkuma. I'm not, I'm not talking as Nkuma as I uh, apostle. I'm not apostle of Nkrumah, but I'm just telling you what I saw and believe they were right. You know, I wasn't a member of the CPP. I was so you're saying the state of the economy now the is... Way, the way it was. And then coming back to this, then Nkrumah was overthrown. We began to dismantle all the positive things. That was the saddest aspect of Nkrumah. Black Star Line. Today, if you had Black Star Line uh, working, all our things coming abroad, from abroad, I, from in foreign ships. You know, many young people will be working the Black Star Line in Tema. Ghana Airways, Ajari, Dokunu. This way, young, I was in Britain, I saw Ghanaian, young Ghanaian, piloting the VC-10, a jet plane. And he were very proud that the black man could manage his own affairs. That all disappeared. It all vanished away. You know, I bought the gas factory. Uh, the, 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 the rubber uh, factory at, uh, at in the Bonsa rubber factory. We were taking off, like a plane taking off. Garden speed and the agents put in, the plane came to a halt. And we are in at a halt, we haven't taken off again. So are the fundamentals weak? When we dismantle it, the president is trying to talk about, uh, about establishing factories, every district, every one factory. They were there, we destroyed them. You can't do anything, how can you find them to go and build them? So if you can't, today we can't feed ourselves. So we can't build the roads. So you're saying today's economy We can't economy be good for weak. our children. Is today's economy weak? From what I'm gathering, make your own conclusions. The children, there's a free education. Go and see what the children are studying. Go and see what we can't build structure for them. We can't build. In my time, it wasn't any better. But we had teachers who were committed to us. We had teachers who were not paid, but they were committed to teaching us. So there's no commitment. Teacher, look, you are selling schools for your children at Flagstar Square. And mothers were running around like, like headless chicken looking for school for their children. That's how you build a modern Ghana. Don't blame the president alone. Don't blame the Kufadu alone. Many things he has to do right. Many things he's been doing right. Many things. Many things. Many things. You, me. All of us have to wake up and build Ghana. Today, you're talking about making Ghana the cleanest city in Africa. You go to Kantamantu. I walk on the street. You go and see. Go to see uh, Kolebu. Go, go to Lavender Hill. You know what, what it's called, Lavender Hill? <laughs> it's a cool for running the country, right? Uh, you no, know, no. You see, when the minister tells you that they're going to attempt to coup, what is saying to me and you that? They are not in the country, right? Let's, let's see. No, no, that, no I'm, I'm just coming. This is what he said because people who do coups announce in nepotism, uh, there's inefficiency, all kinds of things against the government. So, if God, President, President, the, the Minister for Information is telling us, you and me, that people were attempting to overthrow the government, he's telling you in effect that they're not running the country properly. Well, if you can't run it properly, how should anybody overthrow that country, that government? But if it's being run properly, why should anybody in right mind overthrow the government, which is run beautifully? If the people who go to school, who go to Black Star Square to pick, pay for their children, run around without schools. Yes. You made some interesting comments about uh, former President John Dramani Mahama. Yes. You indicated that the changes he made and surrounding himself with inexperienced people uh, was part of... Hurt him. It hurt his chances. It hurt him of, of heavily. Of becoming president. Yeah, it hurt him. And he must take responsibility do, for do that. Do you think he stands a chance in 2020? For, I'm not... Uh, Ghanaians will tell, not me. But, but it hurt him. It hurt him, and it hurt his party. And I'm saying to you, today, in Britain, I was in Britain, promised I'd be resigned in Britain. They don't come back. Mrs. Clinton lost the election to President, President uh, 
Trump. If she didn't come back. What I'm saying to you, I say, when, when you lose a battle, what, 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 what do a leader of a, of, of a team? And anything goes wrong, you take moral responsibility for their defeat. So you because, keep saying when, when, when the le uh, leaders ru uh, lose, they need to take responsibility, re you are a leader. Retire, retire or step back. No, you are, are you saying uh, President uh, Muhammad no, shouldn't no, come I'm back? I'm coming there. You, so when you, you blame yourself for the defeat. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do? Then you say, I'm going to come back and, 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 and right the wrong, which I did. Then you have a, you have a, a what do you call it, um, a, com a commission, a committee, Dr. Kosibo Chase committee. They come back with the, with, the, with the reason for your defeat. And then we sit on them, but they're not palatable. We don't run things like that. The reasons for the defeat are yes, palatable. Yes, you must take blame. So, so should he come back? No, but if you don't, if you don't, if you don't what, what, why I lost, I failed, if, if I lost, uh, I did provincial exam, I lost one, one subject. I risk, 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 risk that, that uh, exam. Without knowing why I fail, how can I go and risk it? You have to, you have to re-examine yourself. But the issue of going to re-examine yourself is something which will make you healthy. In fact, should make the party healthy. So should he come back or not? I've told you. I've, I've said it openly. But he's, he's back. It's maybe it's too late now to go back. Would I you mean, prefer it, if he went back? If I were him, I would never come. I would never, I, I would never do. I've re look, I retired the chief of defense staff. As, at age 42, because again, I've never tried to come back. I've, not, I've never, let, let's, Ghana is moving forward. What you should do is to position yourself to help your party to, to, to look at Britain, Cameroon, and so on. Look at what's happening. But let's learn lessons for what's happening. Mm. They're not going to come back. Mm. Theresa May is not going to come back, and Boris Johnson has messed up things, but he's not going to come back and say, well, I'm coming back. No. Let the party sort themselves out. You have general who fought a war, the general lost a war. They are replaced. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't re readjust them and bring them back. General, a lot of people say you are an NDC member. Are you a card-bearing member of the NDC? I've, I've been a card-bearing member of the MPP. I stood for MPP in 1996. Are you a card-bearing member of the NDC? I've never. I've never. If the Mills, yes, I, you know, I, I keep on, people say you are a political flat. I'm not a flat. I just want Ghana well. Which, which party do you belong to right now? No party. My party is Ghana. Which party are you going to vote for? Which party? I'll decide when the time comes. In 2020, which party are you uh, voting? That we are still a few months to go. But, you know, many Ghanaians are actually so dejected that they are saying they wouldn't even vote. No, many, it's, it's not, this is a very small. Will vote. you vote, General? I vote. Will you vote in 2020? I will vote. Who but, will you vote for? Oh, but, but, but it's a long way. A, a, a week is a long time. In politics, they mm -hmm. said a man called Harold Wilson. A week is a long time. If somebody did something, to run with you to, to talk about politics. But you, you don't like the way the economy is being run. No, no. The First whole, of the all, way, the way you, Ghana also, you run. also do not uh, like President Muhammad's time in, in office. So who are you going to vote for in 2020? Because no, it's I'm, going to be President Ekufuadu against John Dramani Muhammad. To, to, to run with you, run with, run with you. This country needs a third force. A third party. That Are you move. willing to be that third force? Yes, I'm actually involved in. You see, I don't think the way we are going will save this country. The NDC and the Electoral Commission do not have a very cordial relationship. Do you think this will affect the outcome of the elections in 2020? No, it's, it's, they don't, don't have any relationship with anybody, with Santini, with Artini, with everybody. Blame everybody for their, their, their problems. Don't blame those people there. Those, I know uh, Madam, uh, uh, the lady in charge of the Electoral Commission, um, Mensa, what's his name? It's uh, Madame Jean Mensa. Jean Mensa. I know her, she's a wonderful woman. I mean, I don't know why anybody try to quarrel with her. I don't know why anybody or her person says that. But the one you do, you can't carry her weight. Then you blame somebody. It's not, you don't say blame you know her them. very well, and there's no reason anyone will have an issue with her. No, I don't know, I have any problem. How do you with rate that. her competence? What I'm saying is that if anything goes wrong, don't blame the messenger. Blame you yourself. I mean, if, if you don't have a message to Ghanaians and you lose power, NDC lost power, in power. They were in power, lost power. And blame who? Blame the Electoral Commission. Or, you know, we keep on blaming people for what is not their, 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 their fault. And let's look at ourselves. What have we, have we done wrong? And don't blame somebody. You keep on blaming. There was it says something, it says something on there in America. I don't, I don't blame. That reminds me wonderful. I've, I've had personal relationship with these people, like something. In it. And I thank God for it. So you life. think the NDC is just looking for someone to blame? To blame, yes, but themselves. They have done some many things wrong. And they wouldn't look at themselves and say, let's fix things properly. And blaming the Elder Commissioner. 
blaming the uh, something, blaming somebody for what they said. It is wrong. Don't blame me. Blame yourself. Thank you, Brigadier. <laughs> it's been it's been a good time having you on the show. Thank you. And thank you. God bless Ghana. And that was Brigadier Joseph Nunu Mensah. He has a message for the NDC. Don't blame people around you, blame yourselves. You've been watching Horse Issues on TV3. Join us again next week, same time. Good afternoon.